Welcome back to Three Old Tech Dudes. I'm Nathan, as you know. And since we can't all get together and, you know, actually do like videos together, we have some previous stuff that we're still shooting, or we have shot rather, and we're editing down yet. But yeah, until then, we're kind of doing uh, kind of one offs anyway by ourselves. So anyway, we uh, have to make sure we remember our friends through all this joy and madness that we're going through. Uh, yeah, so I've started doing some work on a monitor I picked up, and this is a Commodore 1702 monitor, and I got it off eBay. I got a pretty decent price for it. Um, I paid, I think about, uh, I think it was about $150 delivered approximately anyway, and it had, um, one little minor issue. Well, it really had two, but one, one issue that needs actually addressed. Um, and then we're going to fix the other issue while we're at it. So I did actually turn it on to make sure it would work. Um, and I was initially going to do this with my son. as just a project between the two of us. But I uh, decided to go ahead and just make a video of the repair. Yeah, so this thing has no sound. It does have decent picture, though. So as you can see, it has an image. And I'll turn the lights out and give you a better image here in just a second. But Because uh, the studio lights kind of you know, faded out a bit. But... So the problem is it has no sound. And yes, I know the irony of putting a, a Atari flashback on a Commodore monitor, uh, but it works. So, hey, you know. Anyway, um, so the issue we did determine was the speaker, but I'll show you how. But a few things before we go and open this up, a couple safety things. One, if you are not comfortable working on a high voltage, just don't, okay? The power supply that feeds the front of the picture tube, which is very high voltage, so we get the static in front of it, uh, is like 20 or 30,000 volts. And it will hurt you badly. So if you are not comfortable and understand the basic safety about dealing with inside a monitor, you don't. Find someone who does and let them help you fix it. So a few of the things we're going to do while we have this open is replace the speaker. And I got a speaker that online they said is the closest thing to what's there so I picked it up and I'll show you where I got it I'll take a picture of that here in a minute and I'll put it on the video here so you can see it uh, and it's all right and it is from Parts Express and in case you want to know it is a 292-597 anyway um, another thing about COVID if you're buying stuff on eBay or anywhere right now and having it delivered uh, we actually take all of our packages when they come in they um, watch from coming in of course and then we go out there and we <laughs> we spray down the boxes then we unbox the thing spray down the device thoroughly wipe it down with like a bleach water or Lysol type thing and do all that stuff to make sure it's all safe then we bring it into our house so this has actually been gone through pretty thoroughly and it's safe for that so during all this joy in life right now make sure that anything you buy you thoroughly clean uh, just just be safe just do it it take a minute you can run a bleach water mix clean it down don't power it on while it's wet um, yeah so let's get into tearing this thing apart and take a look at it a couple things about this one real quick just to you know it was actually manufactured in June of 84 so it's got some age to it uh, the picture is not bad considering everything. I think it actually looks quite good. So, let's tear into this thing. You will need a Phillips screwdriver. Safety first. If you're trying to restore one of these things, you know, remind yourself these things are basically a television set from the 1980s. So there's definitely high voltage components in there. This top panel wants to slide off with it. Make sure you uh, hold it in place. Don't hold it over here. Hold it over here because the high voltage lead runs right through there. And this should just pretty, pretty well just come right off. Okay. And 
you'll have the cord has to go through this hole. So just remember that when you go to put it back, because yeah. you'll need to do that. Now, inside this unit, let me show you a couple safety tips that you are going to need to know, and a couple tools you will need. Obviously, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. This is just a Craftsman number two Phillips. You will need this. We used to refer to them as newt sticks, but basically it's a neutral stick. It's a plastic with a little screwdriver tip on the end of it. A lot of times either a screwdriver or a hex tip on this end, and it's just plastic, so there's no worry about high voltage. You can touch high voltage with it and it won't hurt you. Okay, back to the safety part of this. So a couple things you want to make sure you avoid. This lead here, this red lead, that is the high voltage for the picture tube. Do not touch that. <laughs> If you do not absolutely have to once it's off you should hear the front of the picture tube generate a lot of static that is this line discharging <clears throat> if it doesn't um, it doesn't mean that everything's necessarily going to go bad but it means that there's still high voltage on that line so basically don't touch it so you'll see this block here so you see the block here and you got focus and brightness I'll show you how to use those here in a minute. You also got a lot of controls on the board. We'll show you what those mean. You can download the schematics for this online. They're free, you can find them easy. Now, first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna undo this little twisty, and we're gonna pop this lead out of it. Okay, put it behind it. Now, if you look over here, you see the speaker. Now, I've already determined this is a bad speaker, but basically the easiest way to determine it is if you have a new speaker, you can clip leads onto this right here, and it's safe to do that. And just clip a speaker onto it, and you'll hear sound. If you hear sound, well, it's a speaker. <laughs> There's really nothing else. So these leads just come off. You wanna be careful of this. And of course, absolutely, 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 before you take that off, make sure it's unplugged. So we'll pull those two leads off and set them aside for now. And then this whole panel slides off and there's the speaker. And then you've got some other things and yeah, it's a little dirty. So let's look at replacing this speaker real quick with the new speaker. Okay, so you'll notice this little plastic thing here, but you only have two actual screws in it. That's all you really have to worry about. So, We'll go ahead, it is really hard to work with this camera. There we go. So we're gonna pull that screw out. Set that aside. And we're gonna do the other one, which is here. I'm using a number two screwdriver. You could probably number two Phillips rather. You could probably use a number one. But there's the speaker. Now, a couple ways you could test the speaker. If you have a tone generator, you could put a tone generator on there. Which I do, so we could show that real quick. Um, or if it's completely open, you should be able to take your handy dandy meter, turn it on, set it to the lowest ohm setting as long as it's above eight because this is, I'm gonna right side up, an eight ohm speaker, eight ohm. So we should measure on our meter We should measure eight ohms, and we might still, but I don't think the coil is shot as much as everything else is. Okay, so the, the actual coil is still there. So let's take it and put it onto a tone generator and see what it does. Okay, so typically you would not want to use test leads for this, but in this case, it's fine. There's no safety issue. I'm barely gonna power this thing at all because my tone generator doesn't put at that kind of power. So 
I've set it to about one kilohertz. And I got no sound. Now, to show you that should work, let me show you the new speaker. So you can hear it. And then back to the old speaker. Nothing. <laughs> so we know that's the problem. All right, so we know there's no tone coming out of this thing. And actually, it is locked up. That is not a movement cone. You cannot move that. Normally, you should see, you see a little bit of reflective movement. It moves fine. So, basically, this is trash. So, the new speaker. So, let's put her in there. Remembering that it goes back in that way. So, you want the leads to be at this end. Okay. So you just make sure you line your holes up. And I'm going to switch to number one screwdriver because it fits the uh, it fits that a little bit better. Yeah. I'll put that in. Not all the way. I'll put the other one in. Oh. Okay. And you don't have to over torque these. Right? That whole thing should, should move relatively easy. Now, there's a couple other things you gotta remember. These leads are not actually gonna fit on that very well. So you're gonna have to do a slight modification, but it's not a big deal. You'll notice that these are two different sizes. So I'm going to trim this one up just a little bit using a pair of side cuts. And we're just going to go right there and go right there. Okay. What that gave me was two smaller connections to get to. Okay, so let's put it in. All right, so putting this thing in, you've got a groove here, another one there, and they go on this groove there and that groove there. So it just takes a little bit of time to finagle it and put it in place. And that should basically slide in. And then you've got your one speaker connection. And you've got the other, which you just sort of made but it now fits and it should be okay. The only question that people have had before is, does the magnet effects affect the picture tube itself? Uh, we'll find that out. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this lead back into that clip. And yeah, I know it's not dangerous because I have tested it already, but Okay, so for right now, I'm going to fire it up with the back off. If you, again, are not safe and comfortable with something like this, don't. Just don't. Because no one needs to get hurt. There's not a time to go to the hospital for an electrical shock with COVID. So remember that. Okay, so now let's fire this up. So let me bring a game up I can actually play. Ah, I hear sound, though. It didn't do that before. All right. So let's take a look at the picture and see what it looks like. Okay, see where it's, everything's still blue all the way across? Let me make a couple adjustments here. Now, a lot of your adjustments, you got like vertical hold, you've got, I think it's actually volume, and then your adjustment for side to side. Brightness and contrast, and they look pretty good. So, this actually works. This monitor is actually working fine at this point. 
next time on Thrill Tech Dudes, we're going to replace power cord on this thing with a, we'll call it a cost effective power cord. <laughs> it's one I'm going to pull off something else that I don't care about anymore that's in great shape. And we're going to go ahead and focus everything, even though it's in really good shape already. And I'm going to take you through some of the controls and I'll take you through for a few of the other little bits and pieces you can do with the thing. So, three real tech dudes, I'm Nathan. You guys have a good one. Stay safe. Stay healthy.